it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today for a new tutorial. I'm going to be showing you some projects that I made with the new Simon's Stamp March 2021 card kit, which is Spring Windows. But I'm not only going to be showing you the projects that I made with that, but I'm also going to be talking to you about why I love using Karen markers. These are a newer watercolor marker and I've in the past always used Zig watercolor markers. I loved those. But when I got the Karen markers, I immediately fell in love with these. And I'm going to tell you why I love these more than the Zig markers. These are more of a felt tip marker. So you're going to have a lot more control and you don't have to worry about the bristles of a brush such as the Zig markers. You're going to have a lot more control and I think you're going to enjoy working with these as much as I have. So let's jump into the projects. All right, so I'm going to start by stamping one of the spring windows onto some watercolor paper. And I actually stamped both windows. One of them I stamped in intense black ink for some black outlines, but the other I'm watercoloring with no line coloring. And for that, I'm using antique linen distress ink. I chose this particular ink because it's water soluble. So which means as I start watercoloring over this, it's going to fade in the background and you're not really going to notice the lines by the end of the video. So when I'm working with the Karen markers, I use a variety of different techniques. One of which is direct to paper like I'm doing right now. And the other technique that I like to use is to put the marker onto a hard surface and pick it up from that particular board. And in this case, I like to use the Art Impressions watercolor palette. I'll show you that as we go along. Both techniques are great for working with this medium. The Karen markers blend out really, really nicely. I do not have any trouble getting them to blend out into the paper and then also into the other colors that I've put down underneath, such as with these greens. I started with a light green and now I'm adding a darker green on top and blending that out. And the blending is effortless. The other thing I really like is that not only is this a, more of a felt tip marker, but it also has a really fine point. So I can get into really small areas very easily and I feel like I have a lot of control when I'm working with these markers. I really enjoy the harder nib, whereas sometimes with other markers such as the Zig Clean Color markers which, with the brush tip, those have bristles, So, which means as you're trying to work in small areas, those bristles, you have to be really careful that you don't get those into other areas of your coloring, especially if you didn't want that color to go into another area. So for Karen markers, I feel like they have a lot more control and I really, really love the vibrance of them. I don't know if you can tell here, but as I start working with some more brighter colors, you're really going to notice how vibrant these colors are. Now here's where I started working onto a hard board. And this is because I wanted to be able to blend colors together, but I also wanted to start off really, really light. So for the window shutters here, I'm going to start with a really light base color, which is a mix of teal and gray. I'll gradually add more and more teal to this, but I wanted to gradually add it because I didn't want the windows to get too bright. They are kind of bright still at the end of this project, but by adding a little bit of gray at the base layer, it kind of mutes the teal a little bit more. So it has a really nice earthy feel to it. So as I continue to color and add additional layers of that teal, I have now these really nice, beautiful shutters. And I'm working now adding that darker teal on top for some texture. I'm adding some hard lines of color, and I'm also adding a little bit more shading to add some depth to these. And you can see it really makes them come to life. They really look realistic. And it wasn't really that hard. All I did was add a base layer and then brought in some brighter color as I worked along. And then the very last layer was the texture and that really makes these look lifelike. Here's another example of where I'm adding some base layer of color in some brown and gray onto the window frame. And then I'll gradually come in with my Karen marker itself and go direct to paper to add some additional deeper areas, especially around the edges. So I get a lot more definition. And I really think that makes the windows stand out because this is going to be the focal point of my card. So I really, really want this to have a lot of contrast. I also love being able to customize an image a little bit. I felt like the lines around the windows were a little too harsh. So I brought in my marker and started to kind of round them out a little bit. 
and I really feel like that gives it a nice homey cottage look. Growing up and in my past, I've had a lot of experience with old homes and old structures. When I used to live at my parents' house, their house was built in the 1900s, like literally 1900 exactly. And so the old windows and the old style just really speaks to my heart. And I love being able to recreate that feel on my project. So as I'm coloring here, I'm going to bring in some bright colors now for the flowers. And you can see how vibrant, like that pink. Oh my gosh, it just jumps right out of the flower box. So I'm going to continue to finish up my coloring here, but I really wanted to tell you how much I enjoy these Karen markers. I haven't worked with them a ton, but I have been using them both on and off camera, and I have just loved using them so far. So I'm really enjoying these and really feel like these are a much more controllable medium than other brush markers that are out on the market. So definitely check these out if you are interested in watercolor mediums. This is a really fun one to work with. All right, so I'm jumping ahead here and I'm all done my coloring. I'm working now on cutting out the window panes. There aren't any dies yet for the spring windows stamp set, but I'm using a craft knife and I'm cutting out every individual window pane. This is because I wanna turn this into a shaker card and it's really simple. All you need to do is make a few straight lines around the windows itself and it, they pop out really, really simply. The other thing I'm doing is I'm cutting around the three edges of each shutter. This is because I want to pop the shutters up. I'm not going to cut them out. I'm just cutting around three sides of the shutters so that way I can slip some foam tape behind them. This will give them a little bit of lift off of my card panel and it'll make them feel more dimensional without having to actually cut the entire image out. So this is really simple. You can do this with a craft knife and ruler. So I think it's a really easy approach to cutting out this image. Now that I have all the fussy cutting, so to speak, cut from my image, I'm ready to take a basic rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp and cut out my panel so that way this will nest nicely onto an A2 card. On the back side of this, I'm going to add some tape so that I can place some acetate on the back side. There is some acetate included in the kit and I'm going to use this to create the window for my shaker card. So I'll layer that on the back side. Here's where I'm going to place some foam tape behind the shutters. This will adhere then to the acetate and it pops the shutters up just enough to give them a little bit of lift off of the card. Now I'm creating the shaker well for my sequins. I'm just making a small well around the window panes that I've cut out and then the rest of the card panel will have some foam tape around it. Off camera, I quickly blended just a little bit of Wild Honey and Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink onto a piece of white cardstock. This is nothing fancy. This is just to add some color behind my window. I placed my sequins onto that panel, which are from a Simon Says Stamp sequin mix, and I'll layer my window panel then over top of that background. And as you can see, this adds a really beautiful finishing touch behind the window. But I'm not quite done embellishing yet. I'll take some glossy accents now and add that around the flower box so that I can sprinkle on some chunky unicorn confetti glitter from Simon's Stamp. Not done with the glitter yet. Now I'm going to take that glossy accents again and this time go over the window shutters to create just a little bit of sparkly accent here and there. I literally was just scratching the glossy accents across the window shutters because I don't want the entire shutter covered with glitter. I just want hints of it here and there. And it really adds a beautiful finishing touch and something slightly unexpected. To complement the sequins that are in the shaker, I'm going to add a few on the outside of my card as well. And we're ready to move on to adding a sentiment. There are some beautiful sentiments included in the Spring Windows stamp set. And I'm going to stamp one of them with embossing ink onto black cardstock. I'll stamp this gently onto the paper and then sprinkle it with white embossing powder from Simon's Stamp. This I'll heat set then with my heat gun so that I have a beautifully embossed image. And this will pop nicely on top of my window shutters here for a beautiful striking sentiment that complements the entire card. You could cut this into a little strip, but I decided to go the extra step and fussy cut around it so it has a little bit more of a bubble border rather than a straight line. I like how this looks with my finished card and I'll just use foam tape to adhere this down once I decide on the final placement. All right, so now that this card is pretty much done, I wanna show you the piece that I colored that has the black stamping. 
This I colored also with the Karen markers. I did this off camera and you can see how it has a beautiful finished look. I'm going to put this down onto a A2 card base made from ivory cardstock. But before I do that, I want to add just a little glow of color around the window. So I chose some willow ink from Simon Says Stamp and I'm going to blend this down onto my card base. This will look really, really beautiful. I also decided to add a little bit of stenciling over top of that same blending that I did. Just a little tone on tone stenciling. I'm going to use this delicate stencil here from Simon Says Stamp, which I have linked below in the video description and over on my blog. I'll spray it with pixie spray first because it's just so delicate. I want to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere as I'm stenciling. So the pixie spray is going to hold this down. I'll use the same willow ink to go ahead and blend the same color over top of the stenciling I've already done. So it's basically creating a tone on tone effect. It's really pretty, very subtle, but it adds just enough texture that it gives the background some interest without being too distracting from the beautiful window. So same with the other window that I created. I'm also going to add that same chunky glitter on the flower box and then just a little bit of the unicorn dust glitter on the rest of the image. And this adds just a little bit of sparkle, again, to make things interesting, but not too sparkly crazy. I really like how this looks. It just pretties it up and you can't ever have enough glitter on your cards. So this will get popped up off of my A2 size card. There's going to be some sequins around here also from another Simon Says Stamp sequin mix and I'll glue these down with glossy accents. And then the final finishing touch is to pop up my sentiment which is embossed again on black cardstock and this is another greeting from that same spring window stamp set. This will get popped up above my window. So here are my two cards using the Simon Says Stamp March 2021 card kit which is so beautiful and it makes me itch for spring. I am dying for some beautiful warm weather and some sunshine. It's been too cold and snowy here lately in New England. So I can't wait to see some sun. I've already noticed some of my spring flowers popping out of the ground. So I think it's coming. It's just going to take a little more patience. Well, I hope you were inspired today by my projects and that also my thoughts that I provided on the Karen markers might be helpful to you if you're still thinking about getting these markers and you hadn't decided yet. Maybe some of the things I brought up might be helpful to you. If you haven't tried them already, I definitely encourage you to do so because I was hesitant to pick them up, but then I finally did and I am not sorry. I have loved them so much. Well, friends, thank you again for watching my videos. I appreciate all of you who subscribe and continually watch my channel. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. If you're new to my videos, I hope you'll subscribe and you might want to check out the other videos that I have on screen, their previous videos, but I think you'll enjoy watching the content that are in them and I will be back soon with more to share. I have a lot more videos in the works that I can't wait to share with you. So stay tuned and I hope that in the meantime, you're all staying safe and crafty.